after my last video, someone asked if faster than light communication is possible. And I thought that would make a great topic for a video. And in my last video, I pointed out, since it was on the bending of light in glass or medium, that whenever light bends, and it could be around the star as well, the outer fields propagate faster than light. And I also pointed out that when a photon is absorbed at a point, the electromagnetic fields collapse instantaneously, more or less, and they do so while they're outside the light cone. They have to collapse faster than light. And then in a composite photon model, which I've discussed, if you have a central quantum electron positron pair that rotates backward and forthward in a de Broglie model, then the electric and magnetic fields propagate faster than light because they're propagating with each central particle pair as they move. So they're constantly moving in and out. So anytime you try to come up with a composite model of photon, you have to face this issue. The way physicists today avoid it is they say that it's just magical wave particle duality, so the waves are just there instantaneously, but without exceeding the speed of light. But even more generally, when you're discussing any particle wave duality with waves emanating from any particles, it has to exceed the speed of light. So it's, it's not just a photon problem. And then we have the problem of aberration. And this is well known in gravity that if you have the sun here and the earth here and there's a delay, which there is, that if the sun were to send its gravitational signal at the earth where it is when it was set, by the time it receives it, the earth will have moved and vice versa. And so if there were an appreciable delay, there, no, there would be no stable orbits. And that applies to electromagnetic orbits as well. And this has been calculated. Tom Van Flanner did a calculation and figured out that gravity has to be at least two times 10 to the 10th times faster than the speed of light in order to explain actual astronomical observations we've seen. And since he's done that calculation, uh, there's been improved observations, so it's probably a bigger number than that. Now, I'm not saying that it's instantaneous, because no real process can be instantaneous. But it can be much faster than light, and it has to be in order to explain basic phenomena. And then we can look at it even more fundamentally, that when electric and magnetic fields form in the quantum field, in any physically real interpretation of electromagnetic field theory, you need to have a field of dipoles in order to produce the electric and magnetic fields. And in order to explain photons rotating at speed of light each half wavelength, they have to be able to rotate at speed of light each half wavelength. But that also means that when they polarize, instead of each half wavelength rotating at the speed of light being limited to the speed of light, they can rotate a fraction of a degree and, and the quantum field becomes polarized much, much faster than the speed of light. And if you have magnets and they're on a magnetic field, once again, they can be polarized much, much faster than the speed of light. So anytime we try to understand electric and magnetic field formation using a physically real field of some type, which ultimately has to be a dipole medium, then the fields propagate faster than light. And that applies with gravity and acceleration of the forces as well, because that comes down to a Van der Waals type interaction. And those are interaction where if you have light charges together, they repel and they get pushed apart. 
So that causes an outward pressure that pushes everything apart. And in normal space, it's they're being pushed apart or being pushed on the same amount in all directions. But any time that there's another body or another charge or something that causes there to be in a change to the equilibrium, then th things move, things get accelerated. Like the Casimir effect, when two plates get pushed together because there's less pressure pushing them apart than pushing them together. And that force is transmitted faster than light. So the answer is yes. Fields and forces are transmitted faster than light, so we should be able to figure out a way to do faster than light communication. Now the problem is, is so far every type of antenna that we've used in practice ends up producing photons. It produces radio waves or another form of photon wave. And that's where you have a photon moving in a direction and the electric and magnetic fields are transverse to that. So in order to come up with a new kind of way to exceed the speed of light, we can't use a transverse wave. We actually have to have it propagate in the direction of the magnetic field for it to maybe work. And so I just sketched here one idea that if you have two match coils and so that they're matched along the magnetic field line, would those two coils be coupled so that they instantaneously are matched regardless of the distance? And I started to do an experiment on this where I took three meter long, three eighth inch or nine, approximately nine millimeter diameter copper tubing wrapped around a four inch form, about 10 centimeters, into a coil about maybe this long, or into a pair. And then I mounted them on a track so that we could use a frequency generator to input a pulse on one end and then see how long it takes to get to the other end and then change the distance because you could see approximately one nanosecond delay each 30 centimeters. So it would be a simple matter to see if you can measure the delay. Uh, except in our case, it wasn't a simple matter because we tried to use an oscilloscope, but the oscilloscope kept automatically changing the time basis on, us, on it. So we couldn't make the measurement. We need to have a simpler way of making a measurement and I never got around to buying that piece of equipment before I retired. And, and I'll try it again someday when I can afford to buy more equipment and get my coils which are back in the US. So anyway I do think that someone can figure out a way to engineer that and the problem with the two coils if they get separated large enough they may end up broadcasting more efficiently as a photon wave than as a magnetic coupled coil anyway. So I'm not even sure that this is going to work. Um, but I think someone can figure out a way to make it work so that we can transmit faster than light and communicate that way. On that note, we do know there's spooky action at a distance in quantum mechanics and I think that particles are communicating through their fields. And so it does appear that there's a way to do it. And if we can't do it directly electromagnetically, then we may be able to do it using spooky action at a distance. And so we have a lot of opportunities to come up with different types of designs that might do it. Um, and the only way to prove that you've come up with a design to do it is to, to make it and experimentally verify that it works. So hopefully someone will do that and, and not too far into the future. So thanks for watching. 
And I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please like and share it with your friends and subscribe for future videos. And if you're interested in learning more about my research in quantum field theory or particle field theory, I'm selling my books as usual. And I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. I always appreciate that they support me. So thanks for watching.